Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's just take a moment and worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for humbling yourself and coming as a man to take away the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for your great sacrifice and your magnificent love that you have shared with us all. We bless you this morning, Lord, and we are and will be eternally grateful for all that you've done and are doing in our lives. We bless your name this morning. And praise you. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Praise Jesus. God. Amen. Give him a hand. Clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Tim. As always, great job. Thanks, Suzanne and worship team. Good to have Suzanne back. Yes. Doing better. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Well, I uh, <clears throat> my uh, Christmas message will be next week because it's closer to Christmas. Praise the Lord. But uh, I appreciate those. You know, we could sing those songs year round to be quite honest. Yeah. Really touching. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Thank the Lord. Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> y'all heard of cloning, you know, I mean, it's got to be a big deal here a while back. Where the, the sheep, you know, they cloned that sheep, Dolly. Yeah. Named her Dolly, but she was a clone. Well, I, I read a, of a scientist who developed a clone of himself, an exact duplicate of himself, and the problem was that the clone had one flaw, and that was that he cussed all the time. Because every time he opened his mouth, he was swearing and just using horrible language, and he had this foul mouth, and and this cursing just finally got to the scientist to the point where he just couldn't stand it anymore. He couldn't listen to him, so he, he loaded the clone up and stuck him in the trunk of his car and headed up into the mountains and found a sheer cliff where he pulled over to the side of it and pulled the uh, clone out of the, out of the trunk. And he's screaming and cursing, and, and he looks around the scientist, looking around to make sure nobody's around to see him, and he throws the, this cussing, cursing, screaming clone over the cliff and about that time two policemen happened to drive by and they saw him throw this body over the cliff so they were about to arrest him when the when the scientist starts begging he said no 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 he said it, it wasn't a real human he said it was a clone I, I i created this thing and i didn't really kill anybody it, it wasn't human it was a clone and uh, the I, I had to get rid of it, he said, because it just cursed all the time. It was, it was an embarrassment. It was just horrible. I couldn't stand listening to this filthy mouth clone. So I threw him over the cliff. And the police said, well, you know, they were sympathetic, but they said, we'll still have to arrest you for making an obscene clone fall. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Very simple. laughs> Pure, that's a pure pun. That was good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Ever wonder what Beethoven's doing now? Decomposing. <laughs> I'll just give you a couple of quick, uh, because that was a little long. Uh, a couple of quick uh, rhetorical questions. What do you call a missing parrot? Polygon. <laughs> Did I tell you about the clone? If we we'll go back to that, it's a little better response. What do you call a parrot that's wearing a raincoat? Poly unsaturated. <laughs> okay. But he rained forever. <laughs> okay. So we'll move on from there, praise the Lord. Let's go to John chapter 8, and I want to read verses 31 and 32, Sheila. And as usual, this 
may seem random and scattered, but hopefully you can make some sense out of it. But I was uh, appreciate what Sheila was saying because that's really what I've been thinking about and dealing with for uh, next Sunday for the kind of a Christ, more of a Christmas message. But uh, you know, a lot of times uh, Christmas is for some people it's it's the most depressing time of the year. You know, I mean, people that are alone, people that have lost loved ones, uh, first Christmas without them, and you know, the, the, the whole idea of uh, pressure that the kind of the world puts on you to make sure you get all the right gifts and, and everybody's happy and everybody's satisfied and, and, uh, and the people that are alone, the people that, are, that can't do those things that don't have the means to do them and, and feel ashamed and guilty and, and sad and, and all of those things. So there's a lot of, a lot of beauty, obviously, in the Christmas season and, uh, that we really enjoy. But there's also sometimes when, when, you do, when you're caught up in all of it, you forget about the people that are out there that, that are just miserable, that just want it to go and be over with. And uh, so, praise the Lord, that's kind of what I've been thinking about, too. Not, I don't want to be depressing, but at the same time, uh, we need to know what this season's really all about. And, I mean, it's great that we can do other things for people and, and have all the celebrations that we have. I'm grateful for all of that and enjoy every bit of it because you get family together and all of those things. But there's much more to it than that as well. So, anyway, for this morning. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Now look at this. He said, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So there's a difference based on this scripture between believing in Jesus and believing like Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's kind of the, the struggle in, within Christianity. You have people, well, I believe in God. I believe that there's a God. But you don't believe like God or you would see different things in your life. Amen. And so that's what Jesus is really addressing here. And he told those who believed him they needed to know the truth in order to be free. So it's not enough just to believe in Jesus. There's truth that Jesus reveals that makes us access the things of God the way Jesus did. Amen. So knowing the truth will cause you to believe like Jesus right. is the right. bottom line here. So, you know, I believe in prayer, and, uh, and I believe in praying for other people. I believe in laying on of hands, all of that. I, I mean, I'm not against any of it, but the benefits of prayer. Now, you, all of us have been in some kind of a revival meeting or something, and you see people get touched, and maybe they're, they're immediately healed, or they have some breakthrough of some kind, only to find out two weeks later they're right back in the same mess they were in before. Right. Once they're out of that environment, right, the, the benefits of prayer only last if whoever is being prayed for believes the truth in the area that they're prayed for. Right. Now, you can get in the emotion of the moment yep. and feel things and have physical feelings. But if you don't know right. the truth about right. what was prayed for you, then you'll lose it. It won't be long before the, the natural will overcome the supernatural right. in the sense of what you know to be true. Right. In other words, you'll, the facts will start coming back to you because the devil always comes for the word. Yes. So whatever truth you've got, you better know that truth yes. and be settled in that truth or yes. you'll lose the benefit of that truth. Praise right. the Lord. So, you know, two, here's the deal with me. And that's why I don't do a lot of praying for people individually. I believe y'all pray for one another and you believe what God said and that's the way it's supposed to work. Now, I, I will pray for you if you want prayer, but I, I don't go out of my way to do it, not because I'm, you know, not because I don't believe in it. It's just that I, we, we all have the same anointing. We all have the same Holy Ghost and we need to know that because I'm not going to be with you all the time. Neither is somebody else, you know. I mean, sometimes you just got to be able to call on the Lord and believe that whatever you're praying is going to come to pass. Amen? So, too many, see, over the years and coming up through uh, the Pentecostal er, things, too many people are hoping to be zapped, you know, by the anointed super Christian 
or this preacher or that preacher or somebody else. Uh, and and that, that's how they believe in the benefit of prayer. But there's got to be a greater emphasis on changing the way that we think right. instead of making our focus on some man or some woman. Jesus said the truth will make you free. Yes. Amen. And Jesus was free because he believed in every area of his life, provision, identity, health, power. He believed in all of that, and that's why he was free. He wasn't intimidated. He, I, 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 I've misquoted this many times and probably will again this morning, but I'll try not to. But he said he was never disappointed in man because he never put his confidence in men. Amen. How, how many of you have been disappointed in somebody? Praise the Lord. We put too much on them. They're human. They're just like us. And they fail. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about Tim last week was talking about babies, you know, how we're kind of like babies learning to walk and they crawl and they stumble and they fall. And as a parent or a grandparent, you don't say to that little one-year-old or whatever that they are, get up and walk, you idiot. What's the matter with you? No, I mean, we understand they're not there yet. They're not at that place where they've got perfect balance and equilibrium and all that. And they're still struggling with the the actual act of walking. And so babies do a lot of falling down when they're learning to walk. So let's look at this, Sheila. Uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So a lot of people believe that Success is not failing at anything. The truth is, those that succeed the most will seem to fail the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anytime you choose to leave your comfort zone, you know, where you're comfortable, where, you're, where you know all the answers and have all the questions solved and problems dealt with, and step out into faith, you're most likely going to fall multiple times. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. The most successful people in life attempt things with inherent risks. I was thinking of Grover Cleveland. Somebody wrote this, and I, I love this quote. I've used it all my life. And they say, well, who was he? Well, he was the president of the United States, but nobody knows it. Why? Because he never did anything. Yeah. He, his theory was, if I don't do anything, I won't do anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right? He didn't do anything wrong, but he didn't do anything right either. He was just there. Yeah. And so the people who stay in their safety and their comfortable and familiar zones tend to be the ones that criticize the people that step out right. of those and yeah, fall right. yep. because they're trying to do something more yep. than what they've ever done in the past. So the Lord calls us to get beyond crawling, right. to walk, right. like healing the sick like laying hands on the sick, like praying, like prophesying, like ministering by the Holy Spirit, by releasing the kingdom. By being a Christian, yes. not a religious churchgoer. Right. The fear of failing and looking like a failure will rob you of becoming who God intended you to be. Yes. You have to know what falling, when you fall, mm -hmm. as you're learning to walk, in what God has told you to do, in God's truth, isn't really failing. It's just falling. He said a righteous man will fall seven times. But he'll get up and keep on keeping on. Because God's got an agenda. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. And that seven times is simply an infinite number because it's a God number. I mean, we can't say, well, he failed seven times. That's it. Because Jesus went on with that and said, you know, 70 times seven in a day. Meaning there's no end to this. You just keep on getting up. And as long as you keep getting up. You're going to be all right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. You're going to be Thank successful. Yes. You're only a failure when you don't get back up. Right. When you quit trying. Praise right. the Lord. So, not many people see the significance of what they're doing while they're doing it. Right. How many of you, have seen, you know, you just, it's like you're just going through life, right? Yeah. And then you find out two weeks later something miraculous took place. Something right. you said impacted somebody. Something right. you did. Some place you were had an effect on people that you had no idea right, exactly. that you were doing it at the time. You were just doing your thing. You were just doing what you do. And God moved. 
Praise the Lord. So I want you to look at this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll read verses 4 through 9. So it's true of all of us that uh, we don't see the significance in our lives while we're in the middle of the life. You know, we're just too busy living, right? But in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 here, it says, For while one saith, I'm of Paul, and another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Yes. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. That's us. Mm -hmm. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Yeah. Now, I, I may get back to this in a minute, but I, have you, you, you all have, we, we talk about it all the time, but if you read the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew, this is Christmas time, so I was re reading through this, and I was kind of working on two messages at the same time, and, and thinking about next week, and Christmas, and trying to put some stuff together, but the thing I noticed is none of those people knew their highest purpose was for something that was going to happen after they were dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. They, were, they were having some things going on, they were in battles, they had lots of stuff happening in their lives, but the highest call they had, they never realized. They didn't know what it even was until after they had deceased, after they were gone. They had a seed in them yes. to pass on. Yes. And it was a greater seed than any kind of natural life. Right. Anything that would be taking place in the normal. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Romans chapter 6 and verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Now, think about what we just said. People that had this great destiny, this great purpose the geneal in the genealogy of Christ, they had to die before that ever came to pass, before they ever saw or realized or anybody would realize the benefits of that. But here he says, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Yes. All right, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So if you can see what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is the seed, we are passing that seed along. you got to die to see it. These, just like they did in the original genealogy. But this genealogy goes on. And we are a part of it. We have died and now we get to see the benefit which they didn't get to see. Amen. Because this genealogy continues on. So by faith, you plant, you water, you get out of your comfort zone. Amen. And God promises to give the increase. Yes. Praise the Lord. Because of your genealogy, you have inheritance. Yes. You have a promise. Amen. You have significance yes. now. You don't have to wait till you die. Right. It's for right now. You have a seed to pass. Yes. Amen. Your highest purposes on earth occur after your death in Christ. In yes. fact, nothing before that has much significance at all. It passes with the life lived. But this seed, this genealogy, is not only here and now, but it goes on for eternity. There is no end to it. Praise the Lord. So Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. And we'll see this genealogy being spoken of over and over in the scripture. But he said from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 23. Verse 23. And we know that word repent means to change your mind, change the way that you're thinking. Yep. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Uh, no, uh, verse 23, please. Just go ahead and go down. 
And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. This is the result of that genealogy. Yes. Yes. And we are the continuation yes. of this genealogy. Yes. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 11. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. You can see the genealogy here. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Praise the Lord. So in Luke chapter 17, Jesus said, The kingdom of God doesn't come with your careful observation. Neither will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in you. It's yes. within you. Yes. Amen. In Galatians 4.10, he says, you observe days, months, years, times. Amen. And he said, what used to govern you, what used to be your control, amen, was the observances of an old covenant, rules and regulations that will never produce this kingdom that is now in you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom doesn't function by rules. This kingdom functions by genealogical truth. Yes. You're either in it or you're not in it. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. This kingdom doesn't function that way. It doesn't function from the outside in. It functions from the inside out. Yes. Praise the Lord. In this kingdom, the king comes and lives in his citizens. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. It is the spirit of adoption that makes me a son today. Not, not a servant that just keeps rules but a son because of genealogy. Yes. Praise the Lord. We were in the genealogy of Adam. Yes, we were. Yes. Praise the Lord. But now, because we are sons, God sent forth the spirit, yes. amen, of his son into our hearts, and we cry, Abba, Father, or yes. Daddy, God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. We are in this genealogy. That's what he's getting across to us. You are no more what you used to be. You're something special. You're a new creation. Amen. You're in a whole new genealogy. You're living in a whole new realm. Yes. Praise the Lord. God is a spirit. And so are you. And we, whether we know it or not, our true function is in the spirit realm. We just have a body that's in this natural realm, but it's the spirit that makes this physical reality. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's our spiritual DNA or genealogy that keeps us in tune with God, that gives us all of the rights, amen, and privileges yes. of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So our, our acceptance, now we, we're in this gene, genealogy, and now our acceptance, our blessings, our provision, amen, are not based on human performance. It's based on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our elder brother, amen, and his endless supply. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 through 13. And this is why Christmas can be celebrated every day of the year. Yep. This is just That's one right. birthday. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's but right. he had 13 birthdays. Yes. At Grandma's funeral, yes. right? Yes. And I, I was thinking when Tim was talking, remember the scripture where it talks about the, the parable of the, the guy that was out hiring people to work in his fields, and they went out and they, the guys that they hired last at the end of the work day, they only worked like 20 minutes or something. Yeah. They got the same pay as the people that had been there all day long. Praise yes. the Lord. Now, for some Christians, that's a little irritating. It is. <laughs> Praise yes. the Lord. But to me, thank God. Right. If somebody 94 years old can accept the Lord, they're getting the same reward that somebody that's been saved since they were 8 years old. Hallelujah. That's, that's being fair. Praise the Lord. That's being just and justified. 
Praise God. So, for this is the covenant which that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws in their mind, write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, yes. and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no, no more. Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. No more. In that, he saith, a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Mm -hmm. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Remember this when we get to the end here. I'll, this will make more sense than it does right here. But anyway, let me, I don't want to get hung up there. But God is saying, I'll do this. Yes. And, and now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Right. That, whole pro that whole way of doing yes. things, that whole process, amen? John 18, verse 36 and 37. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. Mm -hmm. Now this is where we get confused. We think, well, it must be of this world. Here he is. That's what the Jews thought, and that's why they got all screwed up. He's saying this is a spiritual dimension that we're talking yes, about. Now, you can be in this dimension and still be in the spirit realm. Right. Right? right? You can be in the spirit realm and not be in this dimension. There are things, all, all the kingdom has to offer for us is in the spirit realm. It's in our spirit. Yes. Right? Yes. But it can be manifest into the physical realm. Yes. Jesus was God yeah. in the flesh. He was a spirit in the flesh. He said, my kingdom isn't of this world. No. Right. right? It's of the spirit realm. Right. But so here Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence, or it's not from here. Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou a king then? Jesus answered, thou sayest that, I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Yes. Praise the Lord. So uh, Pilate, I'm sure, was totally baffled and thinking this guy's lost it. You know, he's suffered too much here and he's kind of losing his mind. Because it sounds like he's talking about something that contradicts itself, when in fact he's saying, if you only knew the truth, right. you'd understand that my kingdom isn't from here. It'll influence here, but it isn't from here. Right, right. Praise the Lord. It's from another dimension that is greater than this yes. time zone, exactly. life, 90, 100 years, whatever it might be. It's just a little thing. Right. But it doesn't in any way powerfully reflect the true kingdom, the truth, amen, of what this is all about, all right? Jesus said, because of this, and I don't go there when Matthew talks about it over and over, but Jesus says the same thing. You've got to repent. In other words, you've got to change the way you think to operate in the kingdom. Yes. He's going around preaching the kingdom, but he's saying, repent, because the kingdom is coming, and you have to be available to it. You have to have the right way of thinking in order to receive the benefits of this kingdom. So you've got to repent. Amen. Think differently. Reconsider the way you think about things. You know, change your mind. Praise the Lord. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, so that we might receive the adoption of sons. Praise the Lord. That's why He came. Praise God. The first Adam was told to multiply and replenish the earth after His kind. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we were after His kind. Fleshly, earthly, amen? For 4,000 years, he re reproduced fallen humanity. Yes. Now the last Adam is the firstborn of a brand new creation. Yes. Praise the Lord. And because of what Jesus did in his redemptive work, God now has a family of sons in the earth. Yes. Not gender specific. We're all sons, praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Amen. So a royal family with a renewed dominion mandate Praise the Lord that he gave Adam initially before Adam fell, full of the Holy Ghost, yes. to be dispensers yes. of the seed or of the kingdom yes. of heaven. Amen. Yes. And to fill the earth with heaven's government, yes. 
With heaven's influence. Amen. With heaven's resources. Praise the Lord. Amen. Adam became a gate of hell through his fall. He became the way into hell. All you had to do was get born and the door was wide open and you were there. Praise the Lord. Jesus became the gate of heaven. Amen. Where angels ascended and descended. We saw it on the Son of Man. He said, you'll see it before I leave. You're going to see this. Angels ascending and descending. Which was a reference back to the Old Testament in Genesis 28 where Jacob, amen, had a dream. And what he dreamed of was Jesus. Really, we didn't understand that at the time. We thought it was just God's, you know, here's heaven and we're talking to you. No, it was actually showing him Jesus was going to come and be this portal or this opening yes. back to man, yes. back to heaven. Amen. Yes. Where angels ascended and descended on the, on the ladder. Amen. Yes. He became Bethel. Amen. Yes. The house where God lived. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's what each and every one of our new names could be. Amen. Is Bethel. The house of God. The place where God lives. The place where God dwells on earth. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. The door to heaven is open. And that door was a person. Yes. And now it's many persons. Yes. The kingdom has access now to the earth. And wherever we are, just like with Abraham, he said, wherever the sole of your foot touches, it, it belongs to you. Yes. Well, wherever we are with this understanding, we become a portal. We become an opening to heaven. We become a place that the kingdom possesses. Yes. Where the kingdom dominates. Yes. If we know... <laughs> You know, what we are and who we are. Exactly. Praise the Lord. We are a door. We are the, the access to God yeah. and to heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the, the, if you can change the way you think and operate by the laws of the kingdom, all of the provision of heaven is within your reach. Yes. The kingdom come. This is what they prayed. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Jesus told him to pray that. That's not for us to pray. That was for old covenant people to pray. That the kingdom would come. That God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are that avenue. We are that. We have that ability. And that's our purpose. They prayed it. God answered their prayer. And here we are. Praise the Lord. So we are created in God's image. And again remember the genealogy in Matthew. They had a seed, amen, to pass on, and so do we. Jesus Christ, the Word of God. The Word is seed. Yes. Praise the Lord. He was the seed of God. Yes. And we have it. And that's what we are supposed to be propitiating. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be uh, uh, multiplying. Yes. Amen. So Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three that a man shall have whatever he says. If he believes and doubts not in his heart, but shall believe what he's saying will come to pass, he will have whatsoever he says. Whenever we say the word of God, we're speaking Jesus. We're, we're, we're releasing Jesus into the situation. He is the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and now dwells within us. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he's telling you, citizens, amen, of the kingdom, how to call things that are not as though they were. Yes. We're in the image of God, and he's trying to show us how to bear that image. Because in the flesh, Jesus didn't stand out. In fact, it says he was not something, he wasn't beautiful, he wasn't something that everybody would have said, oh, that, that's got to be the Son of God. No, they just, they just looked like a Jew. He just looked like an everyday, normal guy. The way he represented God was that he only said what God said. He only did what God did. He shared the seed of God. He manifest that into the earth. It wasn't his outward appearance. People aren't going to know these things just by looking at you. Praise the Lord. You say to the mountain while it's standing there, be removed, be cast into the sea. You say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea. Praise the Lord. That's how it works. That's how you call things that are not as though they were. You're calling it the way you want it according to Scripture. Yes. That's how people are healed. Whether we know it or not, we don't understand sometimes. We think it's somebody that prayed that prayer. No, it's somebody that came into agreement with what God's Word said in spite of what the circumstances were and said it. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. You're calling it the way you want it. In Genesis 1, let's read this quickly, Sheila. Uh, Genesis 1, chapter 11 and 12.
God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, it's not surprising to me that Jesus teaches in parables all throughout the New Testament because God was doing the same thing in the Old Testament. He was showing us spiritual truths by using nature, by using the natural way that things are. Amen? Yeah. So, amen, when God promises to uh, supply your need, for example, or He promises to heal your body, the seed is in the promise. Yes. Praise the Lord. He gives seed to the sower and bread to eat. Praise the Lord. So the promises of God are God's will for you or they wouldn't be here. Right. Exactly. Amen. They won't come to pass just because they're in the Bible. Because if they did, then everybody would be healed and everybody would prosper and everybody would be saved and all those things. So it's the kingdom of God and it functions by the principles of God and the power of His Word seed. Yes. It progresses. It, yes. It's a, we read it here this morning. We sang it. And His kingdom is without end. It's an increasing, ever yes. increasing kingdom because the seed keeps being spread. Yes. Yes. The genealogy goes on. Praise yes. the Lord. That's how it's supposed to work. That's how he put, Isaiah prophesied it. Amen. A thousand years before Jesus yeah. was on the scene. Amen. Yeah. Jesus operated in this principle. That's how He functioned. What, how arrogant of us to think that if Jesus had to do it this way, that there's some easier way for us. Yeah. We can just get to the right person to pray for us and everything will be alright. No. John chapter 2 uh, verses 5 through 8. Now look, I'll just show you. I'm just going to give you a couple examples here, but it's throughout Jesus' ministry. This is how he operated. So you want to know how success it works? Amen? you got to get out of your comfort zone and risk failing. Now I've prayed for people. I've seen people healed, and sometimes I, there have been times when they didn't get healed. Now, I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was. I don't know if it was them. I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it was circumstance. I don't know what it was. But that's irrelevant. If I let that one failure or multiple failures keep me from doing right. the thing that God has said we're supposed to do, then I am a failure. Right. But as long as I keep doing what God said, I'm a success. I'm, yes. I'm not a failure. I'm succeeding yes. as far as God is concerned because I'm operating by His principles. I'm doing right. what He says to do. Right. Amen. So His mother said to the servants... Whatever he says unto you, do it. Good idea. Yeah. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. They filled the pots with water. He tells us that. They knew it was water. Everybody there knew that it was water. They saw it. Amen. John knew it was water. Peter knew it was water. Jesus knew that it was water. Amen. But Jesus called it wine. He knew what it was intellectually, but he called it something else. The point I'm making is this is the principle that the kingdom functions under or by. It doesn't function by facts. It functions by truth. And the truth is whatever God said, not what the circumstance is. They all knew it was water, but Jesus said it was wine. Right. Amen. Look at Luke 13, verse 11 and 12. We know that when they went and showed it to the, uh, the head of the feast there, the host, he drank it and said, whoa, this is weird. Usually you give the best wine at first and everybody gets drunk and then you can haul out the booze yeah. farm and nobody knows the difference. <laughs> so don't tell me they didn't drink. You know, that Jesus didn't drink. Yeah. This was a party that went on for days. Yeah. And they had drank up all the wine. Yeah. And Jesus turned, this is his first miracle. Right. And the first thing he does yeah. is supply this wedding ceremony with plenty of booze. Because yeah. they were partying. Now, I'm not encouraging everybody to go get drunk, but I'm just saying, drinking is not a sin. It's drunkenness. It's, it's that, that's the problem. If it were a sin, then Jesus, 
isn't Jesus. But he did this thing where they had drank up all the, all the good stuff. Then they went through the garbage or the cheap stuff. And now they got nothing. Now, the last thing you want is a bunch of half-drunk people with no more wine. I've been, I, I've been to some of those parties. It's not good. You better shut the party down or come up with some more drinks. So Jesus, exactly what he does, and he gives them wine that was better than the best wine that they had had at the very beginning. And the guy says, this is crazy. So we know that it was wine. Praise the Lord. All right. Here he says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift, up, lift herself up or lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her, her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. Praise the Lord. He called her loosed, but she wasn't loosed. She was as bowed over as she had ever been. She was still in the same condition, the same position, amen, as she always was. So what was Jesus doing here? He was calling for the thing that was not manifest. He was calling for that, what the world calls a miracle. He knew what she was. He could see what she was. As everybody else could see, she was bowed over. She had the same infirmity that she had when she came to him. He just said, you're loose. But she wasn't loose. She was still bowed over. He was calling for things that were not to be. So when you read the Bible, God never does anything until he says something. That's how it works. And God is not speaking. I said I talked about this last week. He's not speaking this for communication purposes. He's releasing power. Power is in the word. Power, life and death are in the power of the tongue. God's not trying to communicate with Jesus in heaven when he said, let's make man in our image. He didn't have to have a conversation. They were one. It would just be like me talking to myself, basically. I don't need, I already know what I'm saying because I can think it in my mind. So I'm not speaking it to communicate. He's speaking it to release power. Praise the Lord. So in Luke chapter 13, verse 13. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Yes. While he was talking, nothing happened. Hadn't happened yet. But the moment he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. First, Jesus called her the way that he wanted her to be. Faith always sees the end result. And I'm not talking about, okay, Sally's got an issue, and I'm looking at her, and I physically see that that issue is gone. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying, eyes you have, but you see not. He's talking about seeing in the spirit or seeing by faith. In other words, believing in spite of what I'm seeing, that's healed. Because that's what the word of God says. By your stripes, she was healed. Amen. Or financially or whatever the issue is, that's what we're talking about by seeing by faith. Isn't You're not seeing everything perfectly aligned because Jesus saw her healed, although she was not healed factually. Amen. The truth was she was healed, and that's what he was going by, the truth. The truth is what sets you free, not the facts. Praise the Lord. So we've got to learn to obey, amen, uh, the principle of speaking to things that are not as though they are. That's the way the kingdom works. Praise the Lord. You're not going to make God do it some other way. He's already set this up. This is how it works. It's how it's worked since the creation of earth, of time. And space, amen? So Jesus talked to trees. I mean, he talked to the wind. He talked to the sea. He talked to the dead. Praise the Lord. And they all obeyed him. Yes, they did. Each time he was calling for things that were not manifest. But were in sync with what the word of God said. They hadn't manifested yet, but the word that God said was what he was looking at. That's what he was speaking. That's what he was saying. Amen? He wasn't focused on facts, but he was calling for truth. Yes. Amen? Truth is what sets you free. Truth is what set the woman free. Yeah. Truth is what uh, set the MC of the party free from 
what might have been an ugly scene yep. when they ran out of wine. Uh -huh. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 11. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Mm -hmm. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed or shall not be disappointed. Right. Everything from the entrance into the kingdom to receiving everything from the kingdom works the same way. The gospel of the kingdom is so misunderstood because it's, it's even neglected. And part of the reason for that is, it, the reason it's confusing is because it was the primary message of Jesus. He went about preaching the kingdom and telling people to repent because the kingdom has come. And yet it, it's misunderstood and it's neglected because every other message comes under the umbrella of the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. It has to because the gospel of the kingdom was the message. Yes. That's the message he was preaching. Yes. Amen. Included in the gospel of the kingdom is the new covenant. Which actually is the constitution of the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's the Magna Carta. You know, I mean, it's, the, it's the, the constitution like we have here in the United States. Included in the gospel of the kingdom is this, co is this new covenant. The gospel of salvation is part of the gospel, amen, of the kingdom. Because it's through your new birth, we just read it, that you enter the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. It's not a separate message. It's part of the same message. It's just one umbrella, amen, under which all these others fall. Mm -hmm. The moment you were born again, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness yes. and into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. Praise the Lord. You are a citizen right now with access to all of the government programs. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I mean, that's the way it works. That's the way it's supposed to be. Glory. Amen. It's an ever increasing kingdom. Praise the Lord. The increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, he said. Right. Faith and grace are also a part of the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. In fact, it's the currency of the kingdom. Yes. Praise yes. God. Our problem is... We isolate certain messages and make a movement out of them. I mean, the grace message has been here since Jesus. Why all of a sudden does it show up 2,000 years later? Because we've made everything that's part of the message, the message. And that's why we've got 50,000 different denominations. Because they've majored on one part of this message and declared it to be the message. Praise the Lord. So then we, we make a movement out of that part that we've chosen and uh, declare it to be the whole message when in fact it's only part of the gospel of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Matthew 16, uh, verse 27 and 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Now I want you to read this, because this, this again sounds like a contradiction. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some, of the, uh, uh, some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Praise the Lord. Now we think that's somewhere out in the future. Mm -hmm. And in one sense it may be. But he's talking to us immediate right now. He was talking to the people that were there right then. Right. Said some of them would not die before they saw him come in his kingdom. Right. Right. All right. He's going to reward everybody according to his works. Your works are your words. Yeah. The, the way you benefit right. yeah. 
is not by what you're doing, but by what you're saying. Yes. Right. All right, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Who is he? He is the seed. He is the word of God. Yeah. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's right. It's a question of saying what I've said, mm -hmm. agreeing with me. It'll make your work effortless. Yes. It'll take yes. the labor out of your work. Yes. Your work becomes yes. your words. Yes. Jesus, the word made flesh. Praise the Lord. He is the seed. Yes. He's the word. He's the seed that we continue to spread, mm -hmm. to pass on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hebrews 9, 26, 27. For well, then must he have often, how we just read, obviously in that context, Jesus wasn't talking about thousands of years down the road, right, when, the, when all this would go away. He was talking about it's gonna, it's happen, the kingdom can be seen here and now, and some of you are going to see it before you die, before you pass away in the natural. All right, for then, and that was 2,000 years ago, so that's still ongoing. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. The end of the world here translates, the literal translation is the end of the age or the end of the old covenant. Amen. And he said, put away sin by sacrifice as it is appointed unto men once to die. If you've been born again, you've done all the dying you're going to do. Yes. Right? You have been crucified with Christ. You are dead and yet you live, but yet not you, but Christ liveth in you. Yes. Because God is dealing with the spirit. He's not talking about the flesh. The flesh will go the way of the flesh, dust to dust. We know that unless the rapture takes place first. But I'm not going to die. Just my body's going to die. Who I am, not my reality, the truth of who I am is going to live forever. It's been eternal from the moment it got born again. And that's what he's referring to here. The end of the world, I'm not worried about the end of the world. The end of the age happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus came and fulfilled the law, amen, and, brought, and ushered in a new covenant, amen, a kingdom of God in the earth, which we are a part of because he lives within us. Amen. You died. You're dead. And your sins are hid in Christ. Amen. Amen. The end of the world is not in our future. It's behind us. Yes. It's our history. Yes. These scriptures are talking about the end of the age of the law, the Mosaic kingdom. Yes. Amen. Last scripture, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. <clears throat> Now all these things happened unto them for examples. They are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now this is Paul talking to people 2,000 years ago. So we know he's not talking about terra firma. We know he's not talking about the earth as we understand the earth or the world. Amen. He's talking about an age. Yes. He said that age. Now, all of these things happened unto those people that were under that old covenant, under the old kingdom of darkness, which was physically operated. Amen. And they are written for our admonition. Amen. Upon whom the ends of the age have come. Upon whom the end of that old covenant has yes. appeared. Amen. Yes. Jesus. The genealogy continues. Right? Yes. The, con the, the seed continues to be sowed. 
Praise the Lord. It'll continue to be sowed for eternity. Even if this earth passes away. Amen. The scripture even says, David said, that though the earth and the heavens pass away, yet my word shall not pass away. It is forever settled. Amen. So the point is this. The kingdom isn't out in the future. It began in the first century and is an ongoing reality. Praise the Lord. Romans 1.16, he said, I am not ashamed, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power. Yes. Amen. It's not the conversation or the you know, information about the uh, salvation message. He says it is the power of God unto salvation. Praise the Lord. The gospel, the words of God are the power of God. Yes. Unto salvation. Praise yes. the Lord. Amen. To everybody that believes. Yes. The truth. Yes. To everybody. In the family. Mm -hmm. It's the power of God. To all those in the yes. genealogy yes. of God. Yes. Who operate. By the seed of God. Yes. Can you say praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Thank you Jesus. So I mean. The, the, the question is not. Does God still do these things? No. The fact is God doesn't still do these things. He already did these things. And now it's a question of whether or not we're going to speak them into existence the same way Jesus did. That's the prototype. That's the example that he gives us. We don't need to spend months and months and months in prayer. There's nothing wrong with prayer. It's to, it's to help us to communicate and become closer to God. But it doesn't make God do things. What makes God do things is our faith in his word. And it doesn't literally make him do things. It releases the things that he's done. And we are the ones that have been given that authority and that dominion. And the authority releases power by words. That's what we're doing when we're speaking. We're releasing power. We have the authority to utilize and to use that power that recognizes God's word and, and, and aligns itself with it. And then it must come to pass. If you don't doubt in your heart, and believe what yes. you're saying will come to pass. It has to come to pass. Yes. No matter what it is. As long as it's in agreement with God's word. It's got to happen. Yes. It's got to happen. And if it didn't happen. You're not a failure. You just fell. Just get back up. And keep on keeping on. And you will reap the harvest. You will get the benefit of that seed sown. The seed has to produce after its own kind. Again that's the word of God. All you got to do is find out what seed do you need right. for the harvest that you're looking for. Right. And then start sowing it, and you yes. will receive the harvest. Yes. And the moment the harvest comes, what does he say? You stick in the sickle and reap the harvest. Get the benefit yes. of it because God wants you to have every bit of it. He paid for yes. it. It belongs to you. It's your inheritance as a, as a child of God, as a family member, amen, as part of the genealogy of God himself. Right. Amen. Yes. Give him another hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. I hope we'll see you next week. If, I, if you're not able to make it, have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy it and be blessed. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.